The true relationship between blacks and police go back to the founding of this nation. This nation passed acts such as the Fugitive Slave Act, which was basically acts by local governments to seize and return escaped slaves to their owner and impose penalties on anybody who sought to aid them. And the thing is, it wasn't just aimed at fugitive slaves, it was also aimed at free black people because you had to prove that you were free. You had to put up your papers or your freedom papers, but a lot of people don't talk about those freedom papers. But this is the original interaction, but the people who basically implemented this was the slave patrollers and these were men or groups of white men who just basically monitor and enforce discipline upon slaves and they say the southern states but it was in everywhere they, they were basically slave police they went around and made sure that you wasn't a runaway and they made sure that you was doing what they wanted you to do they they were basically the modern day police in the way that they interact with black people like like they're our babysitters but if we look at the early badges or uh, uh, identification of these people, it's the same type of badges that we see amongst police now. But this is the black codes. And in the black codes, it just goes with different things, uh, limiting and restricting, restricting the movement of black people, such as any uh, slave attempted to run away and lead a, com a colony will receive a death penalty. It talks about how what happened if a slave they ran away or evaded capture for more than 20 days. It talks about uh, owners refusing to abide by the uh, slave codes. It, it, it's just a whole bunch of different things that set the attitude that we face right now in this present day form of America. Because don't be mistaken, we do still live under the black codes and the slave codes. Because if we didn't, we wouldn't still be treated as a second class citizen. But events like this gave rise to uh, people like Solomon Northup being kidnapped. He's very, he was made, he was popularized by the movie 12 Years a Slave, but he was a free person and he was kidnapped because of acts like the future to slave laws. Everybody was good and it, it was legal to get away with it. Which, what you gonna do? How you gonna prove it? You, they don't wanna hear you, man. You're black. At this time, you gotta be kidding me. But the 13th Amendment says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime whereas the party shall have been duly convicted. So they letting it in that, yeah, we're going to free you, but it's still ways that we're going to be able to, to enslave you again. But in 1919, we had an event called the Red Summer. And this event I'm about to talk about, it was still kind of part of the Red Summer because when you look up the Red Summer, this event comes up. But the Red Summer was a summer of riots and race wars taking place in which uh, black people really wasn't having it. But it all took place after the World War came back. People were fighting over jobs and resources, supposedly. But any, any, it don't take too much to bring out the true racism in people. So it ain't like you need an excuse for it to show your true behavior and your true, your true color. But in Houston, this is why I wanted, wanted to highlight this situation. Look at all these brothers in there standing trial. But in Houston, we had a, a, a riot of 1917, also known as the Kemp Logan Mutiny. It was involved where an officer, he was looking for somebody. And so he started basically going to people's houses, I guess. Went up in this lady's house and was looking for somebody and couldn't find him. And then ended up roughing the lady up. But the brothers went to go see about this officer. And then all hell just broke loose, basically. The cops ended up getting killed. Uh, armies had to, like an army had to be called in and everything. But this ended up giving way to like the largest uh, murder trial in the history of the United States. It's called the uh, Houston Rise of 1917, the Kemp Logan Mutiny. But it just shows the interaction between the police because he thought he could get away with it. If we really believe that the law of the land, the Supreme Court, and other so-called judicial bodies were for real uh, when they talked about integration, we would integrate and knowing that the law was on our side and any effort we made to demonstrate towards integration 
why we would know the law should be on our side uh, if it's the law of the land. If it is the law of the land, then the demonstrators are within the law and the uh, uh, discriminators are against the law. Mm -hmm. But to show you the hypocrisy of the law, when Negroes demonstrate for integration, instead of uh, arresting the discriminators, the law arrests the demonstrators. So this is a foolish move on the part of Negroes. Mm -hmm. And when you foolishly get yourself involved with a, a, an enemy, then whatever comes upon you, that's your business. As Muslims, we believe that separation is the best way and the only sensible way, not integration. And uh, on, But on the other hand, when we see our people being brutalized by white bigots, white racists, uh, we think that they are foolish to allow themselves to be beaten and brutalized and do nothing whatsoever to protect themselves. They are foolish. They, have, if they should have the right to, de to defend themselves against any attack made against them by anyone. If a dog is biting a black man, the black man should kill the dog. Whether the, the dog is a police dog, a hound dog, or any kind of dog. The dog. Go get the dog. Go bring.